This world has been sundered by a tide of arcane energy. The winds of magic turned into a maelstrom. The Tome of Fate drew me north to find out why. It guided me to a distant fortress steeped in blood. A battle was fought there. Though long over, the spirit still lingered. In the shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, the bear god of Kislev, lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him. Yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became executioner. A single shot bound in faith forsaken pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Spirits, where lies Urson now? Is he here, in the north? Beyond the maelstrom, in the realm of chaos, on the forge of souls. Is he alive? Wounded and dying, and risen in shadow. What shadow? A demon's? A master of the dark. <laughs> I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a fool would challenge Bellacor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Urson's blood would break my curse, ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Urson is locked in the Forge of Souls, deep in the realm of chaos, and I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All roots have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah, the tome unveils a spell to summon a portal. One to bypass the maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally. One who is tempted by the power of the god bear and can withstand the horrors within. A nation in mourning. False news has arrived before me. They believe Urson is already dead. My proposition will require a delicate touch. I speak the truth. Your god is not dead. He lies in the realm of chaos, a captive of the Shadow Lord. It is no lie. For one drop of Urson's blood, I can help you save him. Choose your last words wisely, old man. Through your bloodline, you and the bear are one. See past your grief. Search your heart. Urson is alive. He speaks the truth. He speaks the truth. Silence! We have lost what is most precious. Many say I am at fault, that I no longer have the right to sit on this throne. So I stand. I stand with my people, all of you, 
And if it comes to it, I shall die with my people. We have been blinded by grief. Ursun lives. And while he fights to draw breath, we fight for him! For Ursun! For Kislev! For Ursun! For Kislev! Kislev marches north into hell. Our goal is to rescue Urson, the god bear of Kislev, from the clutches of Belakor. After fraught bargaining, my price is agreed, and I will do all I can to guide the Kislevites to their lost god. Come then, before I change my mind and cast you into the ice. Advise me. Your Highness, there are enemies close by that threaten your throne. If we are to save Urson, they must be dealt with first. The Maelstrom has forced Northmen, worshippers of the Dark Powers, into Kislev lands. They have taken Gerslev. Slay the trespassers. These incursions and the endless winter have sown doubt in the subjects of your burgeoning reign. Followers of the Great Orthodoxy resent your rule. Pacify such malcontents through diplomatic means or martial might. Kostaltin, the supreme patriarch of Urson's cult, is the instigator of this rebellious feeling. He must be dealt with. If left to fester, it shall cause a schism from which Kislev will never recover. Fortunately, there are allies to be found on our borders, to the west and south. Foster alliances with the Empire and those Kislevite tribes who have always been loyal to your bloodline. There is much to do, Your Highness, if the Motherland is to be secured and your God saved. Let us begin. You've seen legend play in the frozen north. You've seen Zerkovich's campaign exceed to greatness, and you've seen Lionheart in the name of the bear. But have you seen abject failure for strap in? That is what you are likely to see, my Gavan and Melanine, and well met indeed. I am Arakir Galadirathan, and welcome back to Warhammer 3 as we now actually play the bloody thing as Kislev in the name of Zarina Katrin. For Orsun, for Kislev, Kislev will reign supreme in our name. We are playing as Kislev. I'm thoroughly looking forward to playing as Kislev. It is a Friday morning. I'm still off of work, absolutely delightfully. And we have red weather wind warnings today in the UK, which has never happened in my 30-year lifespan, which means it's a blustery day outside. Very Winnie the Pooh indeed, if you understand that reference. And I'm absolutely chuffed to be tucked indoors playing away. Now, my first thing I'm going to just mention, because the pedant in me absolutely loves it, is Zarina Katerin said that Kislev is going to march north into hell. But she couldn't be more wrong, because there is no such thing as Christianity or the Norse religions in Warhammer 3, and thereby there is no hell. The Chaos Realms themselves are the closest thing they have to hell, but they wouldn't call them hell because they don't have a hell. Anyway, what should we build? Let's have a look through. The classic is to not build military in your capital, but I think we should probably go with the theory of build um, military in Kislev and make it as strong as possible. Now, when I played as Kislev for the overview, we were attacked and I lost it. <laughs> You're not going to be watching a master at work, let me assure you of that. Interestingly, the city ramparts doesn't give you, um, any garrison forces, so I'm going to chuck in a watch patrol, I'm afraid, and we're going to get some armoured cossars up and running. We would really like all four of them, but we'll have to replace them as we get to it. So for now, 
Um, I think we should go for things along this kind of line. There are four of those, which would be the top four lines. So you can get five things. So you could get all four of them uh, and then the gar the watch patrol and avoid and just ignore all of these. Put them in, in the capital of the Gerslev region. Volkskrat. No, that, that won't get it, will it? Hmm. Hmm. It's just too good to pass these up. Oh, of course, they give you Zargard and Ice Guard, don't they? So you don't need to worry with the um, Royal Barracks. So that doesn't mean you don't get the Griffin Legion. Oh, we're already at the point where we need decisions. Let's start with growth. That's always a good one to kick us off with. Zarina already has a pretty formidable army, so we shall deal with Leif Gudbrandsson straight out of the gate. Let's make her speed up. Oh, a close victory, but let's fight it so that we can see Kislev on the battlefield for the first time. I have nothing other to say to you. The campaign is on very hard. The battles are on hard. It shall be a challenge. A challenge we shall attempt to rise to. But I say the, the intro is said with jest, but with some truth to it. I am not as good as some of the people you will have seen playing this game. What I think I bring to this is a certain personality that maybe they don't. I afford myself a chance. And that is all. Oh, and we've lost some wind. Brilliant. Cracking. Absolutely smashing straight out the gate. I didn't check her winds of magic from the campaign map, did I? All right, what have you got, Leaf? What are you bring to the table, Leaf? Marauders, marauders. Marauder hunters. And some warhounds. All righty, Roonies. Follow the bear! Snow Leopard, I know I've covered you already. You anti-large? Yes, go with them and deal with those warhounds. The rest of you, slow, plodding march up the hill and let's bring these buggers down. Oh, my headset's about to run out of power. Alright, start the battle. Move up the hill. For the orthodoxy! What I am not doing at the moment is ignoring the battle and plugging my headset in. What I am doing is giving it my full attention. I am not currently looking for the plug socket on the bottom of my headset and failing abysmally, and that's probably the rattle you can hear. Oh, hey, we're plugged in. I'll go over and zoom in. Let's have a look how we got on. Oh, absolutely smashing work, boys. You've absolutely crushed them straight out the gate. We love to see it. Um, you'll note that obviously I've chosen the colour purple for my own visuals. You are all able to choose whatever you like. Um, and if you are unsure, you change it in the uh, this section here under the cogs. And then you can change your colour, enemy colour, ally colour and neutral colour. And I thought I should probably just mention that because purple is not the standard colour of Kislev. You have to... Uh, you have to willfully choose purple. If you want it to be your... Oh, look at the pistols firing. Sorry, I'm not paying much attention to this, but this is a terrible start, isn't it? Absolutely awful beginning for you all. Here I am, barely acknowledging the existence. All oh, the snow leopards dying, the winged lancers. Get out of there, get out of there. Kossar's changed your position. Tsarina didn't bother do anything in the end either, did she? I didn't know anything there. Did the winged lancers run away? No, oh, they're about to. They're being chased. Some of you got away. Someone didn't. What on earth is... That's my winged... Yeah, why? Just because one of you's still in battle. Just bloody get away. You're on a horse. You're on a horse, you stupid bastard. Run faster than the people who aren't on the horses. It's not that difficult a concept. This is something that happens in Med 2, and I never expected to see it in Warhammer. Cavalry normally just thunders through infantry. I've never seen that in Warhammer in all of the time I've put now into Warhammer. And Warhammer 2 is not an inconsiderable amount of time. The enemy is so desperate to kill our horses. They are just letting themselves run in front of us like a shooting gallery. And we'll take that. Now, Warhammer 3, what it has over um, things like Dak, for example, to my mind, is how unbelievably cool the battles look. And um, the atmosphere is just so compelling. And that is what it brings to the table, in my mind. Oh, 
Pistols! Get your pistols, men of Kislev! Ready yourselves for battle! Now, the accent today is going to jump around an awful lot, and at times we're going to be something sounding approaching like an Eastern European, and at others we might sound like a very hammed up Russian person. And I trust you'll bear with me as we settle on what we find is the Kislev accent. Slow leaf cool Branson down. You there. you still got one little shot left. You guys go and kick them out of the game. Now, on very hard hard, if you're just as again, in, on the off chance you've not played Warhammer 3 yet, given that it literally only came out yesterday. Um, on very hard, the enemy gets massively reduced upkeep costs on the campaign map. And on the battle map, they get increased leadership boosts, which means they don't run away as easily. Um... I'm playing on, yeah, very hard, hard, not very hard, very hard. On very hard battle map conditions, the AI is ridiculously good. They get leadership and melee buffs. So what that means is, in practice, your elite infantry will lose to, ch to trash level infantry from other factions. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so, oh, there we go. And uh, so I don't play on very hard battle maps. I allow myself to at least play on hard because as a human, you are you are just so much better than the AI. It's just proven there. I mean, I took some losses because I forgot about the cavalry. That's because I was plugging my headset in. Um, I mean, I lose cavalry all the time. Anyway, you're all looking through that saying, Gallo, why lie to us, man? Why lie to us? And I, had, I hear your cries, my people. I hear what you say. <laughs> but no, this time I was plugging my headset in. And I, um, it means I wasn't paying as much attention. All right, what should we do with them? We can kill them all for a little bit of a leadership buff for five turns. We get a replenishment. That's one I normally go for. We can increase the treasury rate, but we lose um, replenishment. Or we can sacrifice them for some devotion. Our devotion's at 115. We want to try and keep it high so that we stop chaos incursions. Because I can't stand being attacked behind my borders. It bothers me to no end. So let's replenish as leaf falls to the ground. Now, what I'm wary of, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna come out right and say it, is that when I played this um, for the overview, as I say, I played them for a number of turns, so I at least get an idea of how the faction plays. Um, this faction, the Robsman clan, was absolutely wiped out by a Norsken clan coming from north of the mountains that came through, absolutely swept away my ally up here in the forest, took Volksgrad took Prague, and then came and took Kislev with a massive banner army that I could not hold back. Um, I don't want to invoke, because I don't want the hatred, and I'm sure Kostaltin's going to get support up before me. We don't lose if he beats us to the end, though, do we? It doesn't mean that we lose. It just means that he's got more support than us, and until we get there, we can't confederate. But let's just stand here for a second and chuck in some Kossars. Um, we'll get two normals, I think. Armoured cost has great weapons. Mm, you're not, uh, mm, mm. No, maybe... No, 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 no. Let's get the one with the spears. You never know what's coming around corner, do you? Right, let's turn off Lord Not Moved. Let's turn off um, Garrison Lord Not Moved. Why you'd need two different ones, I do not know. Hero Not Moved, I'm not bothered by either. Um, yeah. Evelina Bebchuk. Evelina, what do you do? You boost our income, you steal technology, you assassinate assault unit, and you scout, and you're a Foss Maiden of Tempest. So you will cast the winds of magic on our enemies. But for now, we're going to chuck you in the army and level you that way. Wherever she stands, we earn more money. So she doesn't merge with the cities like they do in Med 2. Again, forgive me, many of you will know Warhammer 3, but I am absolutely going to come at it from the viewpoint that you've never played a campaign. Um, our control is at minus 2. Campaign movement range is down for enemy arms, which is nice. Income's probably the better one at this point, because we only make 100 gold coins from Kislev. <laughs> um, plague, hero, recruit, corruption, recruitment cost, local recruitment. Uh, oh, we should do that one. Get rid of them. Stay where you are for now. You can't move into their realm properly anyway. So we'll take an extra turn for it. Research. All right, let's have a look. Melee defense for Kossars. Unlocks Frost Maidens. Missile resistance for horse archers and Kosovite Dervises. Growth plus five. Probably growth. That's probably the better one to get under the belt straight away. Snow Leopards boosted. Casualty replenishment. Oh, that's another good one. Convalescence. Again, unlocks another hero slot. Ammo is up in reload time. That one's not too bad. I'd probably take that one. 
Line of sight up from the lens crafter. High score training for our lord. So we need that in order to train any new lords. Winds of power is plus 15% when increasing. That's pretty useful. So when you are in the stance to generate more winds of power, it is in even better. And local recruitment capacity is up. Now I'm going to start with growth. I shall start by allowing the people to procreate. Giving them the necessary tools to have a wonderful little night. Have a dinner. Go out for dinner. Dress up warm. There's permanent snow here. All right. With our, we can now get two of each. And they're cheaper. Excellent plan, my lord. Excellent plan. We can't do anything in the ice court yet until we unlock a slot, as I've already mentioned. And we don't get Atomans until we've conquered at least one whole other region. To our south, we have Bechaven of Ostermark. That's one that we would want. They don't really like us, so it's sort of setting us up to uh, attack them. Giving us the advantage. That... But they are growing. Uh, who wants to attack the Empire? The Empire are our boys, man. Protecting our southern flank. We Kislevites are strong. We held back chaos for time immemorial. But to our south are strong defenders who hold back the green tide of the green skins. We respect that. Look how quickly the end turns past. Have any of you seen the um, on Reddit I saw yesterday that there, someone mined out of the files of Warhammer 3? Um, a map which shows the potential Immortal Empires map. And uh, it looks absolutely huge. Absolutely massive. And uh, the turns. I fear for the turns. <laughs> All right. Missions get added down here now, which is quite nice. I actually quite like that. But I've seen uh, certainly the Mandalorian's video. He disliked that. Um, is he called the Mandalorian? He is, isn't he? Mandalore, sorry. <laughs> Mandalore Gaming. He got an early access copy of Warhammer 3 and he did a video on it which was thoroughly enjoyable and he mentioned a couple of bugs which I'm sure have been given full attention by the um, creators already. Gained 50 supporters before the orthodoxy does. But I quite like that the um, they've been added down here now. And I don't mind that it's then added to a scroll wheel mission on that. That just doesn't bother me in the slightest. Anyway, you'll note Praga already coming for us. What's the garrison like? Not particularly good. Can you give me just one more turn and then my watchtower will be up and I'll have even more garrison. That'd be smashing if you would. If you wouldn't mind. Right, we don't want that anymore because we're not using it now. So... Hmm. Let's just get the income up. All right, Zarina. Gerslev must fall. A valiant defeat. Oh, that's interesting. All right, we'll give it a go then. Our Winds of Magic up at 55. That's not bad. We've got the extra Ice Woman. Marauder Chieftain, a shielded melee expert. You're not casting any spells on us, are you? Um, oh, let's encircle for now. Let's see what Prague does. I'm almost certainly not going to get supporters before Kostaltin does. Our devotion is not increasing at the moment, though. Ideally, we need one of those orthodoxy buildings. How far away are we from getting you to tier two? Uh, one turn away from one surplus, and we need two. Oh, I'd love to get that. No, that's the next tier. <laughs> Kislev, I'm genuinely so looking forward to recording this morning. I'm going to do at least two this morning and, and uh, then a couple more on Sunday. I don't know how moving forward this is all going to work. This week has been a blip on my recording schedule. Um, and I don't know how it's all going to play out. But um, we'll find out. I've just really, I've just been really looking forward to this. <laughs> Right, we got our garrison up. He has not attacked Kislev yet, and our encircling is reducing the garrison. I love that that has been added as a standard from the get-go. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, let's give our Kossars more ammunition. What's the second one? Range for Little Grom. Tradable resources produced up by 5%. That's not bad. Campaign line of sight wouldn't be too bad either. Uh, and then down here... Construction costs for wood buildings, armor for war sleds, campaign movement range for all armies. That's quite nice. Upgrades Ursun Invocation of the Motherland. But it requires... Oh, just one more of those. Ammunition for armored costs. But not for Streltsy. That's interesting. Wing Lancers get armor. Bear resistance have a... And devotion gain from fighting chaos. 10%. That's not bad at the end there. But there's loads of things that we could want. Before now, I'm happy to give my costs more ammunition and a reload boost. What are you going to do, Gregor? What are you going to do? The fights as one. 
The Motherland. Uh, there won't be a um, live stream this week, by the way. Warhammer 3 is something that I found as well. is a slightly less optimized than Warhammer 2. In Warhammer 2, I was able to play with max graphics without any problems at all at any point or any stage. I was able to record in that way and I was able to live stream with that without any issues, as I say. Warhammer 3, a little less. I've had to turn down the graphics just to be able to um, not have choppy FPS in certain places. Now, I'm sure that will be fixed as time moves on, uh, but I'm not sure that a live stream would be particularly high quality. And the thing that I am always keen on is quality, quality, quality. Now, let's fight because it's boring if we just stand there. Um, I really, 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 that's the reason why I've been going through the law videos and reworking the thumbnails for them. And I'm going to try and redo a number of the first, the first sort of eight law videos are the ones that are recorded on a terrible microphone. And after that, they're actually on an okay microphone and I don't mind them anymore. So I'm like, I'm going through them because it's just that, that, that drop in quality bothers me so much. And I don't think Warhammer 3 would be live streamed very well using my current system and I wouldn't do it justice. So I probably won't live stream it. Um, and I certainly won't live stream this week because this Saturday morning I'm going to do another faction overview to go up um, on probably uh, on Sunday. And we'll get back to the videos going live at 6am. Uh, we'll start with 14, that's fine. This is the minor settlement battle map for Kislev. Kislev, Kislev. The drums roar on the hillside. We are not going to be able to make use of our cavalry very well here, sadly. But we have now got four trash archers and two elites. Follow the bear. We fight for Ursun. Damn bloody right we do, guys. The, the bear will be saved and it will be by our righteous... Mightious right? That is a word, isn't it? Righteous might. <laughs> Our enemy stands before us. <clears throat> is that an actual tower? This is a mere distraction. Oh yeah, it is. Jesus Christ, and what is that range? Get out of the range of the towers, my friends. My brothers. Um, so that thing's going to shoot at us. Ah, but which which way is the range? Am I now moving into range? Can it shoot all around it? These are questions I don't actually know the answer to. I've not assaulted one of these yet. Ah, no, we've just moved into its range. No, it must be able to shoot all around it, surely. Well, we have to fight. So move the army. Assemble the army! Winged Lancers, come over here and charge into that thing. Snow Leopard, go with them. Bolshki Shklep. Onward. Sons of Kislev, my brothers. Today is a good day. Put down these upstart traitors. Oh, running away, eh? You yellow bellies! Oh, look, they've built themselves a little wall. Ice Maidens. Move up. Zarina, go with them. We have the advantage that much of their army is weakened. How do we stop that tower, though? That's the question. Enemy building is under attack. Not too worried about the building, but the uh, people on top of it, I'd like them dead. I like these. I've seen one of the Steam reviews moaning that minor settlement battles now actually take place... Um, in a walled settlement and that that's a huge step back and I just thought I just found myself reading that review and thinking sorry I are you are you for real the biggest complaint I used to see for Warhammer 2 maybe not the biggest but what a very common complaint up there in the top complaints 
was that the minor settlement battles were just like any old field battle. There was nothing that made them feel special. And they were so boring. Your forces would deliberately leave the safety of a settlement to fight the enemy out on the field. It made no sense. So they added minor settlement battles. And then now one of the top downvoted reviews is that the minor settlement battles exist. I'm so... I put a gasp by this. My voice is breaking. I just cannot believe that that was a complaint. <laughs> you just can't win. You just cannot win. <clears throat> Not that I worked on Warhammer 3, of course, but I feel a sort of kinship with Warhammer purely because Creative Assembly is an English company and I have a number of times actually been to the town within which Creative Assembly's um, office is based and one of my good closest friends used to uh, work with them. And uh, so that they're just it's just a company that I know more than I've ever known any other company. So I, I, I'm... I, I feel like I would be out there defending Creative Assembly, and I'm sorry for that. I'm not a shill by any stretch of the imagination. I think we're doing all right here, though. They are weakening so much. This is why you need to play on hard battle difficulty, because the AI is just not clever enough to actually do things. <laughs> so you have to give them like the benefit of the doubt. Uh, let's just get the cavalry out of here. You're only, you're only taking unnecessary losses. Oh, we could use the leopard, actually. If we take that, then it's all over for them. Oh, there you go. That controls the towers and the like. Right. That one has two towers. So if we took that one, the towers would fall. But I think if we just go up and take the hill. Give them a volley. No, she can't get close enough to do that. No. Where's my hailstorm, Evelina? Give me my hailstorm. One of the Ice Maidens. I've, I actually, I must confess, now that time has passed and we've played Warhammer 2, and we're now playing Warhammer 3, and we've played DAC all the time, I find myself really pleased that units auto-replenish after the battle. And it's, I think it's because I'm getting older. And I know that sounds silly, but nowadays I don't have as much time to play these games and I can't put like a hundred hours into a single campaign, slowly making my way across the world. And also I just think from a like general just raw gameplay perspective, it's, it's more enjoyable to be able to throw your troops in. Because I'm such a sort of perfectionist in how I, well, and how I try to play. I like to keep units alive as much as possible, but knowing that they just replenish no matter what and that lets me feel like I can just throw them in without too much concern. Right, let's curl around them. If they get in range, shoot at them. Sons of Keyslave! God, there's only like two of them. Just just knock some arrows, chaps. Yeah, there you go. Simple request. Right, get up onto the bridge. Let's take down the next guys. How are we doing, armoured Cossars? The roar of battle. Oh, the leopard's involved now. Good, 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 good. Right, pull them back. Ice guard firing away on that one. Move down and hit them. They've still got 350 people. Why are you not doing what I just told you to do? I'm not worried about them. Oh, because they're still fighting here. Right, 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 right. Those ones have almost died. That's crazy. Right, bring them down. Get closer. Can we get in there, please, guys? Zarina! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it good! Hit it good! Yes! Fuel the fear and do it anyway!
All right, they're out. But they're pretty good melee combatants. Combatants? Combatants, memory serves. No, Snow Leopard, go and help them. Keep up the fire, keep up the fire. You're only Cossars, it doesn't matter if you die. I'm sorry. Every life is sacred, but your lives are a little less sacred. Hit it again. Snow Leopard will be alright. It loves the frost. Right, is there anything that's actually a fully sized unit? No, not really. This is the last one that's actually a, a whole unit. I think it's probably time to get the ice caught to go up there and, and help. We make our way through the town. For Kislev! For our soon, for case left, for our soon, for case left, for our soon, for case left. Are they going to climb the walls? Ah, no, they're going to teleport through them. <laughs> because of course! <laughs> Why wouldn't they teleport through them? Didn't realise that was a thing that's available to them. I like as well now, because of how... Terrible my micromanagement is. So many of you will again be crying out. They're dubbing this game down, but I bloody well welcome it. Yes! Fantastic work, Kislev. The white frost will be lifted. Kislev will see the sun again. Who got the most kills there? 70... 92! Ice guard, well done. Your names will be remembered. You will live on in song for decades to come. Excellent work, everybody. Oh, we got the Sword of Might. Not really worth giving it to Zarinish. Doesn't really get into battle. Let's... Um, 333 is not really enough to loot it, is it? It's just occupy the place. Yay! The Vanaheimlings are dead. Take the oblast to main control of the following one provinces, the eastern oblast. It will be done. Zarina, Zarina, my darling. Let's make you better. Start off with that one. And then let's go down the bottom line. I like the bottom line the most normally. Attrition. That's probably a good shout given where we're going to be heading in the end. I like corruption and control as well, but it's... Mm. But then everyone goes up to level 50 now, something else you may not know. So you now have even more of those as standard than you didn't have before. And with you, let's improve your hailstorm. Um, or boost eco forever you are. No, hailstorm. We're going to make you a primary military force. None shall question me. Gurslev, you are closest to our heartland. Ah, but then I would not say no to one of those and start getting some devotions and supporters. Yeah, chuck in a shrine. Um, did you get the Sword of Might? Yes, you did. And Akshina Informant. Oh, I'd like that to go to you. I don't want that to go to uh, Bebchuk. Keys left, keys left. Why do you hate me? Raiding. <clears throat> Difficulty level. Collected income. You hate me because I'm making you pay. You're our only region for crying out loud. If you rebel against me, the whole campaign is over. Stupid. Stupid. We get armoured Kossars, but two more of them would see us only just about make money. But I think it's probably worthwhile, isn't it? 163. Well, let's at least get one to, to match our grouping. 163. We could then get one more archer. Should we get one more archer? Should we get one more of them? No, I think we should probably just get one more of them. Armoured, armour piercing, armoured and shielded. That one's slightly more defensive, that one's slightly more aggressive. But we've got the... Def the mm, Cossars aren't really defensive though, are they? Get another great weapon. No, 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 the other one. Get a defensive one. You and I. Do as I command, and Kuzlev will rule these lands. And then we need to go and hit Grigor, but we're going to have to wait two turns before we can hit Grigor. But we are coming, Grigor. Do not settle in, my friend. Your death will be swift. 
Your death will be severe. We will hang your entrails on the road from Prague to Kislev for all to see what happens to the traitors to the motherland. Now, if you would boost my income, actually, Evelina, wherever you are, because you are with four t with sorry with fifty available points, you're going to be able to just get everything. So None there's no risk there. Me. Right, one more turn. They're not healing up very nicely, are they? Of Gorslev, Gorslev. Four turns to Kislev can upgrade. How much do you cost? Three thousand four hundred. Right. That's uh, my only plan is to kill Grigor. I'd quite like to get Prague before we get the Eastern Oblast, if I'm being brutally honest. Because again, as I say, the North is such a threat for the Eastern Oblast that let's secure Prague and not worry about that place. Have we got trade rights? Good call, Drozina. Do not even consider questioning my authority. There we go. I love this as well. So you know now exactly what will make them say yes. It's such, such a good addition. Now oh, we're already trading with Ostermark. So, Ostland. Greetings on behalf of the Empire. Now what brings you here with a Why do you dislike all those things so much? What's your problem, guys? What is your problem? Here I am, defending your northern flank against quite s some you disgusting horrors. And you ain't giving a damn about it. Now the only problem is though is that if we move away from Gerslev, we're going to lose it, aren't we? Let's be let's not beat around the bush here. As soon as the army goes for Prague, they're going to retake Gerslev. But then Prague's more important than Gerslev. So sod it. Ends the turn. Normally one of these factions dies every single turn, and you get down to about ninety-five. And then it sort of settles down. Yes, Kossar's ammunition. It's all looking up. Melee defense for Kossars isn't bad. Missile resistance, not too worried about that one. Um, let's boost the local recruitment. Looks after you. Hot damn, do I need a drink. Great Holy hellfire. Get to the bridge. Stand on the bridge. And we wait. Now Gerslev hates us, but we are gaining one devotee per turn. And one supporter per turn, but if we go to that, I am sure... Oh, wrong one. Um... Oh, it's up there, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, they always just seem to get huge boosts. I don't understand what they're doing. Five when occupying a settlement, so we would have got five for taking Gerslev. One, and whenever we construct a building, we've got no buildings on the horizon. We're not getting any character acts anytime soon. And we get two for fighting a battle. Now, we are going to shortly fight a battle, but is it worth... The Chaos Incursion for a two supporters generated. I just, I just think tr trickle passive income is probably going to be the way I'm going to get that. <clears throat> We're going to build orthodoxies all around the world. Oh, hello, caravans. Heng Zhan and Ming Tian. Oh, we got a patriarch. While trapping the scrawny rabbits of the oblast, a huntsman is set upon by a wandering bear. The attack is beyond horrendous. His wounds countless and grievous. Yet impossibly he lives. It takes him 20 days to drag his broken body home. His survival is miraculous. Truly, Orsun loves him. Oh, that's a, a nod, isn't it? When you play as Slanesh. Yeah, what do you do? Cleanse corruption. You might as well join the army as well at the moment. Oh, no, don't do it there. No, 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 no. no. Because we're going to move up here. Uh, when you play as Slanesh, there's an event called um, Spring Break, <laughs> and it gives you um, Slanesh corruption, or uh, it gives you devotees, sorry, under the coat. I keep calling them devotees because of that's what they call Slanesh, and that's the last one I played. It's the last oath you did. Hello there, guys. Feel free, wander through, I don't mind. Generating trade. What's the turn turn now? Two for Kishlo. Right, we shall fight against Grigor, who has come for us, and then that will be episode number one wrapped up. Down to 99, we lost three in a turn there. Oh no, where did Grigor go? Grigor! Grigor, come back here! You have been marked for death, Grigor. Where did Grigor go? Oh, he made it all the way home. Jammy bastard. And Prague probably has a ridiculous garrison. Alongside building a second army already, anyway. Of oh, I hate them. Alright, let's go and take Volksgrad, then. Follow your queen. 
Maybe we will use Beledny Shevchenko. Use you as a scout. It's helpful to have a scout, isn't it? Oh, our troops aren't even fully replenished. Do we have 3,400? Because Kislev can now upgrade to tier 3. And then it will be secure forever. Final resting place. Devotion plus 30 if we give it a quiet burial or we recruit another kid patriarch. Now nah, give it a quiet burial. <clears throat> it deserves our respect, this bear, this creature, this beast. Hi guys, how's it going? Oh, they're the Brotherhood of the Bear. We are good terms with Brotherhood. We together stand... No, they, those are improving, those are improving. They like that I have a treaty with Ostermark. Who call? Yes. Greeting. We haven't met him yet, though. We haven't met him yet. Summon the Elector Counts. Oh, Grigor and Kuba have both then taken the bait. And it is then to Grigor. Oh, come off it. Can we not reach him with that one turn? That's a joke and a half. What do you do? Wound. Hinder replenishment. We can take down Kuba with very little losses. Oh, here they are. These are the people that seem to... S that always just push through. They've gone right through the Brotherhood and they're coming directly for us because we're the human. <sighs> so disappointing to see that's still a feature in this damn game. Um, let's get the casualty replenishment up. The great orthodoxy provides. I'd like to kill Grigor first because Kuba's easier. They will fall. Pyrrhic victory. Nah, mate. We're going to smash them. Oh, how many... Horses does it take? How many horses do you need? For Ursun, for Kislev. 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 We will put down these traitors. They've got a lot of cavalry. Now, we did attack them, but given how much cavalry they've got, I can't help but feel they're probably going to charge at us. That would strike me as the most common course of action here. They will come for us. And unfortunately, we are downhill. Um, let's, let's stand over here and force their army to flank a bit. Kossar's on the edges. Um, go into melee mode for now. So you got your spears ready. And just protect our flanks. Well, move as we move up, we'll move you properly. But you guys just hide in the forest. And then you guys come at the back. Who did I leave behind? Oh, yeah, you two. Oh, aggressive flank. Right, so, guardians. Yeah, they are coming for us, as expected. It's the cavalry. We need to prepare for the cavalry. Cover the flank. Cover the flank. You've got cavalry support there. <clears throat> Cover the archers is the only thing I really am interested in. Are they moving all five dervishes over on the left? No, they've got more dervishes than that. So where are the others? Spears out, chaps. Brace yourselves. We fight for Ursan. Halt. They die. Give them a blast. I know you're not going to kill very many through the trees, but... Right, pull back behind the archers, let uh, our archers be able to shoot them. There's more cavalry on that side. Now, the, the dervishes are useless actually in battle. Um, no. Do it there. 
Do it, do it now, do it now! Yes! Oh, bugger. Boss! Run behind, run behind! Stand your ground, stand your ground! Winged dancers! Come out of the trees, go and hit them. Katarina, uh, you're probably gonna die. Sorry, love. They're doing alright over here. Turn and face, turn and face, turn and face. Spears ready. Oh, they didn't go for our archers. Well, that's interesting. Right, we mustn't get too bogged down in who did what to who. At the moment, our entire battle strategy is stop the dervishes from being bastards. Well, those Cossars have been massacred. The dervishes are dying well, while the archers... Move forward if you have to. Do what needs to be done. No, we don't really want to hit. Well, the armored Kossars, pistol and axe infantry. Yeah, go on, give them a charge. Give them a volley. What's happened to you guys? Turn and face, 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 turn and face. Good charge, boys. Good charge. In we go, 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 in we go. It's the bloody dervishes. Get their line back. You guys on the right. Let's get out of the trees. Get all of our Cossars up and rearing to go. Where are our... Oh, will you just dog off, you stupid Kossavite dervishes? Nobody likes you! Has no one told you this? Nobody likes you. Do it that way. Yes, more, more, kill more. Hit them all. Snow Leopard, go and deal with those. Winged Lancers, take out the dervishes. Stop them doing whatever it is that they're doing. Archers, let's mass fire on them. Armoured Kossars up the hill. Let's go, go, go. Winged Lancers, let's go and help over there. In Kislev's name. Defend the Snow Leopard. Oh, that's lovely to see, isn't it? That just brings a real tear to the eye. Oh, who doesn't like a good cavalry charge in Warhammer where the game is so over the top with its cavalry? <laughs> the spectacle. Oh, we are offering them up as human sacrifices, if I just noticed. It's over. Look at them all cowering. Even Catherine's going to get involved. As long as our hot units aren't entirely wiped out. Well, we lost that spear unit, didn't we? Gregor will not survive this day. As his army flees the field before us. Everyone pull away from Gregor. Pull away from Gregor. Zarina. Slow him down.
I will not accept victory with them running away. I will only accept victory when his head is severed from his torso. Bring me his blood. Look at him trying to slowly walk away. Let's just turn off all of the pomp and circumstance. Oh, that's not what you want to see as a devoted Kislevite warrior, is it? Oh, down he goes. Oh, with a good shooting girls. Someone got him in the head. I like that. Absolutely excellent work. Yeah, take them out as well. What the bloody hell? As many as can be killed. Let's revert to the good old days, shall we? The good old days indeed. When you would write, run down routing units just for the fun of it. Absolutely lovely. Capture as many of those as we can, please. We should probably have enough that this army will actually just die. End it. End it here. We lost 276. And our spear unit did die. It doesn't have any purple colouring. It's just not greyed out yet. It's the next screen. They lost 584. Dervishes in the end killed absolutely no one. And our winged lancer's got 100. That's fantastic, chaps. Well done. And we did indeed lose our spear corsairs. They paid with their lives. I can't believe their dervishes did that badly. That's just atrocious. But they served their purpose. They tied up our army and just kept us pinned in place, which is a bloody ball egg. They will serve the mother. Well done, everyone. Why are we suffering attrition here? Oh. Frost winds carry me. Yeah, they can get us on the next turn, even if we get down there, and then they'll catch us. Um, keep stopping attrition, please. Evelina, improve your hailstorm. Nicely done, everyone. Nicely done. Oh, bloody Skaven already. We're only in the first few turns. Jog off, you daft bastards. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. Nothing you can say would ever make me like the Skaven scum. Where did the Bessonlings go? Let's just get out of the attrition. I will permit. We can train another unit again. Um, the spear unit. I think these are just these were just better, to be honest. But they cost obviously more, less money. But we're already in the realms so we're not making any money anyway. It doesn't even matter. And there's only a hundred and fifty difference. But then the archer aspect is probably no. I'm going to go for armored cossars again. Sod it. How long are you going to take to replenish? Turn nine turns, gods above. Do you have a replenish troops feature? Yes, you do. Does that make it any better? Five turns. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Almost halved it. Alrighty, that's probably going to be where we're going to end episode number one as Gaspar Shevchenko and Darius Kolovak move in to try and keep harassing our army. Oh, we will take Prague, don't you worry. Raise an additional army. Defy chaos. Nah, friend. Not today. Kislev has but one turn, and then that'll upgrade. That's nice. We can get a couple more buildings. I think we need to get some money um, for a short time. Oh, and that's going to grow in one turn as well. But then do we want to waste money on Gerstler? Because we're probably going to lose it. I don't know. But for now, that's going to end episode number one. I really hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. I hope you are looking forward to the second one, which will come out tomorrow. So you get the first two straight away. And then I'm just going to flood as many as I can next week because I'm just enjoying playing. But I'm back to work next week, so we'll have to wait and see. But for now, that's episode number one. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you will look forward to the rest of it. Stay tuned for the rest, and until we speak again, dear friends, Navarnaden Perimad Melunin, and farewell. For er, soon for keys, left for er, soon for keys, left for er, soon for keys, left for er, soon for keys, left. Keys, left.